Very major events had taken place in the past few days. One was the Feast of Trumpets. The second is the September 23rd event that has fulfilled the 2,000-year-old prophecy of Revelation chapter 12, the birthing of the man-child. September the 22nd, the day prior to that, was the Day of Trumpets. On the Day of Trumpets, the trumpet call is going out to call the people to repentance. Hosea chapter 14, 1, Return to me, says the Lord, return to me, and repent, and return to me, because we have entered with that the ten days for repentance. That's the days of all when everybody must examine self for what sins they need to repent of and repent until the day of atonement comes, which is September the 31st. And obviously after that is judgment, so everything is lining up perfectly. Now the Feast of Trumpet only is one day, you find it in Leviticus chapter 23, verse 26 through 32. When you learn that this is the tenth day of the seventh month, it's a day of reconciliation with the Lord, and you have to fast all day long for 24 hours. But why they call it a feast? I think you feast on the Lord as opposed to on food, because it's still called a feast, but certainly they must have fasted. And that entered a season of ten days, of repentance, which is really the process of reconciliation, to be ready for the Day of Atonement, which is actually the Day of Repentance, which would say that this is the end result of the ten days of repentance, now we are free, now we are set free, now we can come into the presence of the Lord, because after that comes the Feast of Tabernacle, when the Lord is coming to Tabernacle with men, and we go into the boots and meet him and celebrate him and set ourselves apart and don't work and this is the season we are in so the feast of trumpets started on the 21st of september with the new moon and was one day on the 22nd and we are now into this time of 10 days and we don't have much left of it because apparently today is the 26th so we are half time So we have really have a great urgency to repent of whatever we need to repent of. Now the Israelites blow the trumpet at the new moon and blow the trumpet at the full moon. The new moon is at the Feast of Trumpets. The full moon is at the Feast of Tabernacle. And that has significance. Praise the Lord. And the beginning of the Hebrew New Year is the same day with the Feast of Trumpets. So the Hebrew New Year was trumpeted in the night before on the 21st of September when the Feast of Trumpet began and it represents the newness of life and the fullness of life at the Feast of Tabernacle at the full moon. So this is so amazing. Everything is happening just right in these few days. All the fall feasts are fulfilling their biblical prophetic expectancy. The Lord laid before us very clearly what is coming and when it's coming. The Feast of Trumpet also is leading up to the Day of the Lord, which is there to offer to Him a sacrifice by fire. I will not have the time now to post another message on the Day of the Lord, but I already have done that, and it's under the title Day of the Lord with the Scriptures, if somebody still wants to know more about it, because that is considered the most terrible day in the history of humanity. And without going into much details, let me just say that it expected to be a metal shower because it's a word by devastation and as to my understanding is the opening of the sixth seal when there is an earthquake followed by a stars of heaven falling and there were a lot of prophecies about this metal shower even people have seen dreams and visions seeing it walking in it 
and going up into the rapture during so in other words when they went into the rapture there was still some fiery balls were falling of course they weren't walking in it freely <laughs> they were at, at gross danger and angels helped them to go into safety because people will burn like torches the scripture says so it's a very severe day and the reason why I'm talking about offering by fire, which is at the Feast of Tabernacle, there is an offering by fire for seven days and even on the eight days, which is a holy convocation. So this is really when the Lord is inquiring the Israelites to give him something that is value to him, that is pure. And if we go through this day of the Lord where the fire is falling and the whole earth is burning, then Malachi chapter 3 will fulfill that we are purified like silver and gold is purified in the fire. So yes, we are going to do away with everything else, but um, reverence for God, the fear of the Lord will come upon us, and the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, so that's what he means. Then we offer ourselves to him pure in heart. Praise the Lord. It's not the subject of this recording, but again, I don't know if I will have the time to go into much details on the day of the Lord, because of the day of repentance is coming to an end very soon, and I would like to repent. <laughs> so let's do that instead of being more enlightened, because I think we have plenty of information to see what God is doing. Now, going back to these wonderful times of Day of Repentance and on the 31st, and the Feast of Trumpet, the New Year, because the New Year is indeed the beginning of the Kingdom. Also, if the Lord returns, that marks the beginning of the Kingdom reign. When the separation takes place, when the rapture takes place, then the Kingdom is here. It's just not how we expected it. I think we all can say that. And if you read uh, Hosea 14, that is a beautiful call of God when he says, whatever you have done, I will heal your iniquity. I will wash you clean. I will make you mine. So God is so graciously offering himself, begging to us to return, but so many will not hear. So let us return to the Lord with a whole heart. And after that, he comes for those who have repented. So we have entered into these 10 days, and September the 23rd, by the fulfilling of the birthing of the Manchild prophecy, fulfilling means that the constellation Virgo reached a position as it was prophesied. Furthermore, around the Amazon video, display popped up on my screen because I'm subscribed to her and she titled it Revelation 12 sign so I said okay let me see what she says about it because I was curious and she said something amazing namely that she had dreams and also the Jewish law is after giving birth or even after the woman's monthly cycle there has to be a seven days purification. Now, September 23rd is the birthing of the man-child in the spirit, and then comes seven days purification that leads up to September the 30th, and the next day is the Day of Atonement. And what does that mean, seven days of purification? We are not thinking in natural terms, but we are thinking in the blood, purifying by the blood, or purifying, washing clean. Who can wash clean? Jesus. Jesus can, can wash us clean. He will wash us clean and forgive all our sins if we come and repent. Because the 10 days was from the 21st. The 10 days for repentance is the 21st. That was at the Feast of Trumpet when it started. So at the date of the birthing of the man child, which is the 23rd, we only have seven days left. And on the eighth day is the day of atonement. And by then we should be washed clean with the blood of a lamb. 
so that we can stand before the Son of God. So the woman gave birth to the man-child on the 23rd, and the purification, the seven-day purification, concludes on the 30th, and on the 31st, the baby should be revealed. Or, what does that mean, revealed? Coming into existence, because that's the transfiguration. Now, I'm not at all suggesting that the 31st is the day of transfiguration. But I do say that that is the day when it's already possible for the baby to show up. Because by no means we can say that's the day. We don't know that. Because immediately after the birth is that the baby is cut away. The scripture says that immediately after the birth the baby is cut away. But the question is how much time that means in heaven immediately. Because they call half a year about half an hour or a month, a blink of an eye, how much time immediately represents in heaven, because if a thousand years considered to be a day, so that just means there is no comparison, heavenly timing to earthly timing. That immediately can be a day, a week, or could be even a month or a year, the only reason is not going to be that long, because we know from the signs given from heaven that the time of the rapture is considered to be during the Feast of Tabernacle. And i tell you more about that in a minute. Actually, the woman giving birth is the bride of Christ who are chosen to go into the first rapture, the few chosen, the man-child company, and since flesh and blood cannot enter the kingdom of God, they shall be transfigured prior to entering the kingdom. So only after the days of purification is that the baby can be shown, or actually that the woman who gave birth can come forth purified, but the purified woman is actually the man-child by the transfiguration. Then the prophecy has to be fulfilled that the Antichrist has to be revealed. All this time I have expected the Antichrist to be revealed prior to the rapture, which means prior to the Feast of Tabernacle. However, a sister said in the video that the scriptures were translated or purposefully mistranslated because we know how much the Catholic Church has tampered with the scriptures, so that's just common knowledge. And change the word in the scriptures where it says apostasy when the apostasy was translated into falling away, as opposed to what it truly means in Greek, that means cutting away. So the wicked one has to be revealed, will not be revealed until the cutaway takes place. That would put the revelation of the Antichrist behind our rapture. Very much possible. We are days away from seeing it all. I believe that might be the case. I do see the preparation for the takeover, for the UN takeover and the New World Order to step in, but perhaps will not happen until after this rapture takes place. But immediately after, then Second Thessalonians 2 would sound like this, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered together to be with Him, I beg you, my friends, not to be so easily confused in your thinking or upset by the claim that the day of the Lord has come. Perhaps it is though that we said this will prophesying or preaching, or that we wrote in a letter, Do not let anyone deceive you in any way, for the day, the day of the Lord, will not come until the final rebellion takes place. So in this says, until the rebellion takes place. King James says, until the falling away takes place. But then it would read, Do not let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until the cut away takes place, and the wicked one appears, who is destined to hell. He will oppose every so-called God or object of worship, and will put himself above them all. He will even go in 
and sit down in God's temple and claim to be God. In other words, the day of the Lord would be rendered behind the cut of it. So, this is amazing. Because the scripture says in Psalms 91, you will only see with your eye the destruction of the wicked. That would mean that the changeover would take place before the day of the Lord. Because that's going to be a very terrible day. Which would mean it could be before the Feast of Tabernacle, before the day of the Lord, right around the day of atonement. Oh, shoot. Well, you know, these are just thoughts, so you pray it out. When <laughs> it's new thought. So this is when, when you receive such a newness of thought, I'm not calling this a revelation, but it's something that is shaking the foundation of my faith because for so many years we were really trained our mind to think in this track that first comes the Antichrist will be revealed and then the day of the Lord comes and comes the rapture. Now if this word would change and would say that the caraway has to take place before the Antichrist appears. That means the caraway would come first and then the day of the Lord and then comes the rest. So, very interesting. I don't think it's true though because of other prophecies are not supporting that, but we're going to see this by the end. Now, I walked away from it for a few minutes and then came to me that why am I not looking up in the dictionary this word Apocalypse in Greek, how they pronounce it, I'm not sure, and then see what it says. I used Google and I used a wordreference.com in which says Apocalypse, the Greek word, English meaning of it, revelation, unveiling, sensation, or English to Greek means that disclosure means apocalypse however they pronounce it so then it doesn't mean cut up cut away i don't know where she get that from she says that they changed the dictionaries accordingly which is possible they rewrote history too and that she looked it up some kind of greek dictionary so anyway it doesn't prove to be true for us but very much possible that the revelation of the antichrist will not happen until after the rapture so then, could it be that we are going to go into the day of the Lord transfigured, illuminated already, so that we only see with the eyes the reward of the wicked because it cannot hurt us? So anyway, it's important that we know the season and we know what to meditate over and what is expected of us and what should be our expectancies. Standing and again, nothing I say is more sure than your prayer. You hear it and then go and ask the Lord for confirmation. Take it to Him in prayer if any doubt you have or any question you have. Like I said, I've been searching and prayerfully searching these subjects for years. So therefore, I just communicate to you what I have gathered. That doesn't make my understanding more valuable than human understanding. Of course, considering the Word of God going into my spirit for many years and the many prophecies, divine wisdom came out of it. But I am still subjected to errors. And I am not claiming divine wisdom. Divine wisdom is when I say something that is in agreement with God. I say what God would say. Then I am operating in divine wisdom. And when I don't, then I operate in human understanding. And you pray and tell the difference when you have a red flag. So none of this I claim to be 100%. But I believe in it 100%. There is a major difference. So I will leave it as is and continue to Revelation chapter 12 because there are also a lot of new thoughts and revelations are uh, coming to us, which is really shouldn't be new because it was there for us all the time, but somehow we weren't interested in that part until now. So that will be the next session. Oh, and I promised to tell about the Feast of Tabernacle or something. Well, it was 
it was about the rapture and I already communicated that several times I just want to make sure it goes out because I'm sure not everybody is listening every videos that there were prophecies dreams and visions whereby the rapture took place during full moon and the full moon falls on October the 5th and October the 6th with 100% visibility and on the 7th with 97% visibility and like I said also there were some fiery rocks coming down as they were going upwards and those of you who still say that nobody knows the day or the hour I agree I don't know but the Lord did not give us these signs so that we will know that the rapture should come within these three days and again if it's not coming nothing happens it's not the end of the world it is just to keep hope alive it is to keep a highest expectancy that's the only thing here what matters because people attention is scattered all around they care less about the rapture please remember the other half of the word of god which says that god doesn't do anything without telling his prophets he's not bringing these signs to us and this is only a very small portion of it but i remember so that we would be ignoring it all and would stay well nobody knows so i believe that the metal shower is the day of the lord and from that the, uh, the three days of darkness settles in and from that comes the visitation of the lord as he promised like i said in the previous videos there are many letters uh, given to mankind about this visitation and at that time we would be cut up into heaven just as apostle paul was and then he came back to do the work and the same thing will happen to us exactly the same thing we are going to go to heaven for a visit like i said before the lord said we're gonna have a three days journey in one day i always thought that the transfiguration and the visitation are the same but now after discussing all this about the day of atonement about the order of things and the transfiguration before the rapture i don't know anything anymore okay <laughs> and that's how god operates i mean praise the lord we do this thing for decades hundreds of years thousands of years two thousand years since the bible was written and i'm not the only person thinking of these things right millions before me and we still don't know and that's a good thing we are not gods but yet what we accomplish is that we yet have anticipation enough understanding not to go for a, a vacation when we need to be in prayer so you know we don't act like the word we act according to what god is doing and if we just accomplish that then we really are the few because nobody does that i mean no matter how many people i talk to i tell them about this but nobody listens even those who i considered years ago i thought they are first fruits they just repelling the word so if you are listening and got this far into this message and into these messages oh my god that's a very mighty thing congratulation hallelujah you're part of christ's body part of the manchild company the bride and again i see many many brides whose ministry i'm familiar with because i love them I receive emails from them for years. Nobody really have the anticipation precisely. They do know that the Lord is going to give us rest. They do talk about being in the favor, coming forth with the ministry, as he promised, receiving the commission, new revelations, put it many ways, but really not breaking down the scriptures as we do it here that's okay as long as they are in the flow in the vein but i still believe that it's valuable that we got this far and praise the lord he's 
soul precisely guiding us through prophecies into this. So I believe that it would help if I would depart from you with reading a couple of prophecies. How about that? Just short prophecies, which is flowing into this because more vessels we hear it from, more convinced we are that we are not out on the limb, that we are not out of out in our own imagination, in our own little words. Because I do know many people who have a whole different word inside of them than what either the word system, the satanic system, would call reality. So, we can create things, but this is based on scriptures, this is based on prophecies, so I truly believe with all my heart that we have not took off to a different path that would lead us away from the path, but it's we are walking on the straight and narrow, praise the Lord, walking towards the gate, and we are just that close, actually, to stepping through the door, praise the Lord. So, I'm going to read a prophecy, which I value very much, just came in. Father's Heart Ministry, that is my daily bread now. And just one more thing, how important that is to understand that we are only going up on the elevator. We are not going anywhere, we continue to work, continue to work on the earth. Indeed, we just start our ministries, many of us are just flowing into now what God gave us. I downloaded from heaven the visions, uh, these are huge projects, but I have to work out for the kingdom's sake. They will go into the millennia, so it will not be a one-year project. It will not be a ten-year project. It goes behind it. But I just received enough to start somewhere. It is the beginning of that. So, and the reason I'm saying this because you will see this coming through the prophecy. Here we go. And I only read parts, not the whole thing. The disasters you have faced are in your past, and the new territory of blessing and favor awaits you through the gate I have set before you, even this day. Let the winds of my goodness fill the sails of your faith. Rise up and shake yourself from all lethargy and hopelessness. It is a new day, and you will now begin to walk before me by a new and living way. You have not passed this way before, beloved, so move forward with the eyes of a child, expectant and rejoicing with every open door and every new horizon. Have you looked back? Look back no longer. Do not look to the things that are behind you, but look to the things that are ahead. The trajectory of your life has yet to reach its agape. The days ahead of you are greater than the days behind. You have yet to experience the full scope of my kindness and favor, but it is coming, and you will taste and see that I am good behind all your expectations. Sit down at the table I have prepared for you in the midst of your enemies. Partake of the provisions of faith, life, joy, and rejoicing that is not mere empty expectation. The substance is about to be made manifest in your life. Look up, for your redemption draws night, and the fullness of my grace is being visited upon you in a moment of time, says the Father. So I think that's a clear message. I am reclaiming those that have fallen. My leaders who have failed, those who have erred, those who have plummeted into sin and darkness will see a great light. My fallen warriors and champions will see a great light and will recover themselves by my grace to new life and new placement in my kingdom and in my purposes. Be encouraged, says the Father, be encouraged and lift up your heads. For I have sealed you with the inheritance of saints, and I will restore you from whence you have fallen. Others may have rejected you. Others may have marked you as unfit and unredeemable from your situation, but that is not my word, and that is not my nature, says the Father. 
Did not David collude to slay Uriah? Yet my hand lay heavy upon him until he was restored, and his throne placed in continuance. Listen to my voice, says the Father, and not the voice of the threats of those who would withhold from you my clemency. Accept the grace of my unconditional love, receive the cleansing and renewal that comes only from my hand, Know that my heart not only grieves over the transgressions of my heart grieves for the transgressions. Mercy triumph over judgment, says the Father. So receive my mercy, receive of my hand the mercy that lesser minds and smaller hearts would deny you so vehemently. Leave them to me. Your standing in the kingdom is not measured by what others think of you, but who you are and what you became as you accept the cleansing of the shed blood of calvary you are mine i have called you by my name i have called you and i'm renewing you set aside the shame revoke the habit of self-reclamation and self-pity stand up shake yourself off know how you are and what you are your past will not dictate your future your present is a path leading to the bright future I have planned. Yield to my hand in fullness as I make all things new in your, in your sight, says the Father. Remember the scripture, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard it, neither it conceived in the heart of man what God has for those who love him. And in another word he said, you made a covenant with me and you left your parents and your land and whatever and so really we have made a covenant by sacrifice and those are the one he is speaking to just because we put him first we might make all the mistakes and we might be the most imperfect people he is faithful and true so even myself but i say things which are apparently not true when i talk about the severity of the judgment of god that is the old school he is merciful I mean, I'm not saying to continue sin and say, oh, it's okay, God understands, but as long as we desire Him, as long as we come before Him, as long as we want to repent, as long as we want to serve Him, that's all it takes. Even He said in one of the words that, oh, you still want to serve me. I see that you still want to do, although you failed, although you whatever, I, I just because you want that, I will do that for you. So He is very merciful but also he's continually calling to come up higher, to be in the presence, to listen to his voice, because he don't want us to miss this. So really now our focus must be on him and him alone. And that's just bottom line. And I believe that with all these messages, if we don't accomplish anything else, but that we stir up our spirit and have a highest expectancy than ever before, then we have accomplished what it was sent for to do. Amen.